A single Polk Monitor 10 Series 2 loudspeaker would have set you back $370 in 1990, or about $900 today. It boasted a 1-inch tweeter, two 6.5-inch mid-ranges, and a 10-inch passive radiator. The sensitivity was listed as 89 dB, and its impedance was listed as approximately 8 ohms. What I'll do is give a little bit better view of the drivers, and then we'll look around back and see what kind of speaker connectors it has, and then we'll get into the data that I measured, and finally I will tell you what it was like listening to the Polk Monitor 10 Series 2 loudspeakers. Here is a closer view of the tweeter and the mid-ranges. I should point out that these guys weigh about 40 pounds each, and their size is 28 inches high by 15 inches wide by 12 inches deep, just to give you an idea of their actual size. Let me go down to the passive radiator, and that is the passive radiator. And as you can see, the Polk Monitor 10s have your standard three-way binding posts, which are nice. Here is the impedance of the Polk Monitor 10 speakers from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. You can see here that I've averaged out these responses and it comes out to be 7 ohms. Another good thing to note is that the impedances follow each other pretty closely. I mean, they're off a little bit here at the low end of the band, but pretty much at the uh, 4 ohm point, which is the lowest uh, impedance that they demonstrate, they're the same, and then they kind of pretty much are the same for the most part. So they aged pretty much about the same. Now I'm going to show the phase plot, which would be this curve here, just for you know information purposes only. But you can see even the phase plots, the two channels follow each other uh, fairly closely and the just the normal impedance plot is down here just to see kind of how it aligns with the phase plot. This plot shows the frequency response of the two Polk 10s from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. The first thing that I notice is that both of the speakers track each other very closely as far as the frequency response goes. So that's a good sign, and we kind of saw that with their impedance. They both kind of matched each other, so they age pretty much about the same. The little suck out here and here and here are probably related to my room, which is far from perfect. And you do see we have a bit of a rise here above 10 kilohertz. Overall, if you averaged all these up, you would come up with a sensitivity of about 87 dB SPL. I'm going to bring up the Klipsch KG2, which is a similar kind of speaker. And so that's this guy right here. Now it's highlighted in yellow. Just for comparison, that's measured in the same room under the same conditions. And you can see that it does have a little bit better bass response. And it is kind of flatter once it gets above 2 kilohertz. So overall, this is how the frequency response of the Polk Monitor 10 looks. And how it compares to the Klipsch KG2. And this is without the grills on, I should mention. As you saw from the test data, these 35-year-old loudspeakers aged pretty much the same. The frequency responses tracked each other very closely, as did their impedances. As far as their impedances, I would give them about a 7-ohm rating based on the average of all the impedances. And as far as the SPL, when you average all that data, it works out to be about 86 dB. There is a very big suck out in the low end of the band, and that's due to my room. But overall, when you look at the data, it's about 86 dB for the SPL. As far as listening to the speakers, I place them on stand about 18 inches above the ground. And they're probably about seven feet apart, and I was probably about nine feet away from them. And they were way out from the wall just due to the stuff that I had behind them. I couldn't move them towards the wall. So that kind of cut into their bass response. Now, when you look at the REW data for the frequency response and compare that to the Klipsch KG2s, which are measured in the same spot in the room under the same conditions, the Klipsch KG2s have a better bass response, but 
overall the bass on this guy was okay it's just not going to give you that rumble uh, that I like when I'm sitting down in the chairs. I like to feel the bass coming through the the chair that I'm sitting in or the couch or whatever it may be and these didn't do that but they still sound very good overall. I have no complaints to the sound. I thought they did a really nice job with the imaging and they're very smooth sounding speaker and they're not fatiguing kind of thing. They, they just sound really pretty darn decent I would say especially for uh, the money on these that you might be able to find them for. They're probably a very good value. If you do have them in the corners of your rooms, I think you will pick up uh, some of that low end bass a bit, but uh, you'd have to experiment with that. Now, as far as an amplifier that I would recommend for these speakers, probably something at least 100 watts per channel if you listen to it loud. Um, that would be my recommendation. Uh, I think they recommend something from 25 watts to 250 watts in the literature, but if you listen to your music loud, I would probably go with something that's at least 100 watts per channel into 8 ohm. So that's kind of my take on them. Um, I think they're a pretty decent speaker, and you know, for the money, if you can find a nice used pair and everything seems to work well, they probably will be a good addition to your vintage collection. So once again, if you liked the video, thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the channel, I hope you will consider doing so. And I always like seeing your comments or questions in the description area of the video. So until next time, I hope you have a great day or night.